And now our preschool and kindergarten class is going to sing a song for us. <laughs> could just stand up so your kids can find you because they're going to come sit with you right now and if our younger kids have not gone to get ready for the plague would you guys all run downstairs real quick because I was supposed to do that like 10 minutes ago <laughs> amen And I failed to dismiss the kids, so we need to give them a minute. Danelle, come on up and let's sing a Christmas carol. Woohoo! She's like, oh, really? Okay, all right. <laughs> Stand up. Let's, you know, or we can, we can, we can. William, real quick. Joy to the world. Praise team, you want to come on back up for a second? Come on, guys. There we go. Help out. There we go. Hey, you got to be impromptu sometimes, right? Yeah. Amen. The kids were supposed to sing at the beginning. And they sang where? In the middle. Oh, so Here we go. All right. Here we go. Joy to the world, the Lord is
Ake. Here come our drama team from Destiny Church. You may be seated to present no small parts. <laughs> director say they're gonna put a spotlight on me when I talk. <laughs> I've got a long speech too. It's called a monologue. Yeah, whatever. And uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven lines to do. This is the biggest part I've ever had. It doesn't matter how many lines you have. I don't know if you would have me married in my beautiful room my costume. Well, I think Brian's costume is barely even when that's all I it. But Mary's the star. Mr. Cassidy says there are no stars, that all our parts are important. Don't you know he only says that so the people with outlines don't feel bad? Me? Trust me, there are stars and I'm one of them. Well, I think that's the star, but at least I get to say something, not like Joseph. Yeah, me and Joseph can't say anything. He just stands there and looks. <laughs> I'm glad someone finds this funny. I sure don't. It's not fair. I played Joseph last year. One time is okay, but twice in a row? Maybe the director doesn't think you can remember a lot of lines. Maybe he just doesn't think you're a good actor. But I am, and he knows it. I had the lead in the school play last spring, and he was in the audience. He even told me I was good. Yes, I did tell him he was good, and I meant it. It's because he's such a good actor that I gave you this part. Sometimes the parts without words are the toughest ones to play. You act with more than just your mouth, you know. I mean, Joseph wasn't a man of many words. Matter of fact, the Bible doesn't even quote him. But he had a good heart. But most important, he was willing to do whatever God asked of him. Joseph spoke with his actions. Kind of like, like Vin Diesel, but minus the guns. <laughs> hey, uh, I'm not on stage long enough to do any actions. Look, give me something bigger, like a king. Maybe even a shepherd, and I'll show you some great acting. With or without thumbs. But I really need you as Joseph. Nobody else can do this part. Hey, there's an old saying in the theater. There are no small parts, only small actors. What's that supposed to mean? Think about it. Matter of fact, why don't you all think about that? <laughs> do you know what it means? I know. Maybe they see so much short actors around. Don't worry about it. I think I'll make it great, Joseph. Why not? You've already done it once. <laughs> well, I'm going home to learn my lines. Want to come with me? We can come to my house and rehearse together. Good idea. Let me just come with me. Are you coming? Why? I don't think any of her standing and looking concerned. <laughs> Look, I'm sorry about that. I didn't mean it. It's okay. You guys go on ahead. I'm going to hang around a while. See you at rehearsal. Peace. Well, I don't care what anyone says. Our small parts, and this is the smallest. Even Vin Diesel couldn't make this look big. This guy's a loser, he never talks, and he doesn't do anything. Mary does all the work. I know how you feel. I felt the same way, and I had to live through it. Who are you, and where did you come from? I'm sorry that I startled you, and I apologize for not introducing myself. My name is Joseph. Well, Joseph of Nazareth, to be precise. You're playing me. Look, my mom will be here any minute now, and the pastor is just on the phone. Okay. <laughs> it's okay. I mean you no harm. I wouldn't harm anyone. I'm a loser who never does anything, remember? <laughs> so, so what are you, a ghost or something? Have you come to haunt me? No, no, nothing like that. I'm just here for a few minutes to help you think. Listen. You can tell whoever set you up for this that I don't like playing you. There's no actor in a ratty bathroom that's going to change my mind. <laughs> well, I admit it's not exactly something you'd find at the Gap, but it works back in my day. Look, I'm not here to confuse you. I'm just here to help you do what your director said. Think about this part and how important it really was. It's small. Only in words. Well, what else is there? Our stories are all we have to tell us about that night, and you barely even mentioned. If you're so important, why is it the more written about you? Well, I'm afraid that no written account, even one inspired by God, can tell the whole story. Look, I asked all of these questions, too. I've, I, I, God asked me to take an awful big leap of faith in doing what I did. And don't think I didn't have my doubts. 
There was a time when I wasn't even sure that I wanted anything to do with Mary or God's plans for baby Jesus. But God talked to me, and he let me see just where I fit in. I had a really important job to do. I'm not boasting, but if it hadn't been for me, things might have turned out differently. Just what did you do? Well, think about it. Who saw that Mary made it safely to Bethlehem? Who led the donkey? Who found the inn and persuaded the innkeeper to let us sleep in the stable? Yeah, things might have turned out much differently. But that's okay. I wasn't doing it for glory. I was doing it for Mary and for my son. And because it was the role that God wanted me to play in this story. You really Just like you could be doing in this play. You really were kind of like a Vin Diesel, weren't you? I prefer Jason Momoa myself, you know, better hair. <laughs> <laughs> so why don't you ever get life in the pageant? Why don't we see you doing all this cool stuff? I'm afraid that what I did didn't seem very special at the time. I was just trying to be a good husband and father. But that's okay, because the, the real reason why I was doing it is because it's what God asked me to do, just like he's asking you to do. I get it. It's not about how long you're on stage, or how many lines you have, or even if the audience notices you. It's about doing what we can, as best as we can, so the story gets told. Right. There's a part for all of us in God's plan. All we can do is play it the best that we can. I will. And thank you. Boy, wait till I tell the other kids about you. I, I, I wouldn't try to tell them. <laughs> <laughs> They'll just think you're crazy. <laughs> Show them. God can still work miracles, but he doesn't want us to expect them. He hopes that we'll take things on faith. So, don't mention my visit, okay? Okay. Thanks. Oh, and, uh, Thanks. do me one favor. Don't wear that ratty beard this year. Give me some dignity, okay? <laughs> that thing is pretty ratty. You got it. No beard. You'll do fine. Take care. loud so everybody can hear you okay yes. look do you want costumes for this thing if so i need to try and stuff make alterations and there's kids that haven't even got the measurements yet uh, not right now we really need to rehearse well unless you want a bunch of naked angels <laughs> uh, no we'll knock off a few minutes early and then you can do it then is that okay all right but don't anybody leave till you see me all right, we're going to start with the lead angel speech. You ready? Can I sing my line first? <laughs> it would be easier if we started with the narration. Um, you're right. Let's start from there. There are shepherds in the fields watching their flocks. Suddenly, the sky lit up and a host of heavenly angels appeared. The shepherds were very frightened. They do not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy. For unto you, born in the city of David, is a how do you see the next word? A savior. Right, a savior. And in, this is a sign to you that you will find a baby wrecked in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. <laughs> okay, everybody together. Glory to God in the highest. Peace on earth and will to men. Is that all we get to say? Uh, yeah, that's all of it. But you did it very well. Now, angels, you go off right, and the lead shepherd will stay, okay? But my aunt is coming all the way from Aurora. J couldn't I say a little bit more lines? Like, follow us. We'll lead you there. The angel, oh, wow. the angel didn't lead them. A star did. No. How about go on? We'll watch the show. Listen, I'm sorry. The show is running kind of long. But I tell you what, you can be in charge of all the animals, okay? Okay. 
Let us go to Bethlehem and find this baby. They catch us leave the sheep, the sheep will be fine. God will watch over. Let's hurry then. I want to see this baby for myself. Mm -hmm. But wait, I haven't turned my monologue yet. I have two other lines after that. No, you don't have anything else. Listen, I told everyone the play was running long and we had to cut some lines from all the parts. Didn't you get the revised script I sent out? No, I didn't think you were cutting off any of my lines. I thought we were just dropping the double games. No, we had to cut a little bit from everybody. This way we didn't lose any parts. So I guess it's down to two lines, huh? I'm sorry, but yes. Okay, Mary and Joseph, this is where you come in now. Okay? The shepherds ran to the stable to greet baby Jesus. I'm here, but Joseph isn't. Has anyone seen him? He felt pretty bad about being Joseph's gun. Maybe he's not coming. But we really need him as Joseph. Do you want me to see who else would need him? Well, but nobody else can pull this off. Sorry, Blake. I was working on my part. What do you have to work on? Oh, there was a lot to figure out. I wanted to make sure I was the best Joseph ever. But you have no lines. <laughs> <laughs> Just, yeah. I want to think about my costume, and how Joseph would have walked, and what he would have been thinking about, and what he could have been carrying. I am really glad to hear that. Matter of fact, everybody should take his or her part <coughs> in this seriously. Are you really sure you're okay with playing Joseph? Mine? This is a great part. Maybe one of the most important in the play. You're right. No small part, only small actors. Then, yeah, I figured out what you meant by that. Every part in a play is important. Like any character out in the play loses something. Just like every person has a part to play in God's plan. Then what does the part about small actors mean? He doesn't look any smaller. <laughs> means, uh, I can't explain. It means being so concerned about getting credit or attention or having the most lines that you don't do a good job with the part you have. It's being too small up here to see how you fit in with the play as a whole. You understand now? Yes! Good. Now we need to get finished the rehearsal. But how did you figure all this out? I had some help with someone who really understood how I felt. Who? Really? A really old friend. Nobody you know. At least not in person. I, I don't understand. Think about it. Radiant be 
You know, this season, we've had a message every week that actually tied in to the play just perfectly. The first week we talked about, we took lessons from Elf, and we asked ourselves some questions of, do we know who we are, who we are in Christ? Do we know what the gifts are that God has given to us? The second week, we were talking about the greatest Christmas party ever, and we talked about how God has a detailed plan for our lives a detailed plan for the party of our life, filled with his extras, filled with our enjoyment, filled with abundance. And then this morning we're reminded that every part matters. You know, you might feel like your life is insignificant to God. Sometimes we find ourselves in a world filled with billions of people, and we wonder, well, who am I? Does my life matter? Does God know who I am or what I am? My life is just a small part. It's just a small role. But regardless of whether we think that or not, Jeremiah 29, 11, and many of you are familiar with this, it says, For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. God is aware of each one of us in this room today. He's aware of where our life has come from. He's aware of where our life is going to. He knows every detail, and he has something for each of us to do. The question is, just like Tyler in the play, is how seriously will we take that role that he has given us? How seriously will we play the part that he wants us to fulfill in his kingdom? So often we go through life and we just, we don't think that we matter that much or that we're that important, so we just kind of coast along. When it comes to the church or the body of Christ or even being a Christian mom and dad or a Christian parent or grandparent, we think, what difference do I actually make in this world? And the thing is, you make a great difference. We all have a small part to play. You know, yesterday, my wife, we were talking in the car. We were um, driving around doing some last-minute Christmas stuff. And she was talking about, uh, we were talking about, if you know us, if, if you're part of our church, you know that we've had 13 puppies that have been going out to people. And she was talking about her piano recital she had with her, with her 10 students this week at our home. And I was telling her, you know, every one of those dogs I've been praying over before they go home. I said, and a lot of our dogs are going to Christian homes. They're going to homes with Christian people, even some of them spirit-filled people. I said, but some of them aren't. And I actually prayed prayers over each of those dogs before they're going home. And I've prayed for those who don't know Jesus. And I've prayed that those little doodles that are going out to houses, that somehow maybe that doodle will connect those people with somebody else who, doesn't know Je- who, who knows Jesus. So those people can find Jesus. And I ask God to make those little dogs a part of someone's salvation. You might think, that's kind of crazy, Pastor. Not really. Not really. Because God works in little ways, amen? He works in small ways, and small ways to do big things. And likewise, my wife returned and said, you know, she goes, I pray over all my piano students. Some of them I don't have the opportunity to fully share with, but I pray for them. And I know that God will use the part that I'm playing in that, in their life, somehow to find him. And I remember watching her for years go to the same lady who would do her hair when we lived in Arizona. And, so, and we went back after we had left Arizona, and, and that lady's like going, you know, I gave my heart to Jesus. All those talks we had, but I gave my heart to Jesus. And I'm going to church, and I'm part of a small group, and God's working in my life. And we don't know sometimes the small role that we're playing in the big picture. But God wants us to play that small part. Amen? And whether that's being the mother and father that God's called you to be, to be an example to your children, to teach your kids the ways of the Lord, or whether that's to be a part of the church and where you're serving in the body of Christ, whether that's to give or to help follow something else that's going on, there's no insignificant role in the kingdom of God. What God wants from us is found in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, where it says, Trust in the Lord 
with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all that you do, and he will show you which path to take. When we say, God, I don't maybe understand my role. Maybe I'm not Vin Diesel. Maybe I'm not the dude who plays Aquaman. Maybe I'm not like that big star or something. But, but I don't understand what my role is. But you know what? I will play my role well. And I will seek you in all that I do that you might use me and my life to impact the lives of others. So I challenge you this Christmas season. Take Christ seriously. Seek him in all that you do. Endeavor to please him because Ecclesiastes 9.10 gives us this verse. It says, whatever you do, do well. Say that. Would you say that with me? Whatever you do, do well. And that means that whatever our hand finds to do, you can take that down. Whatever your hand finds to do, whatever you are going to be a part of, God wants you to do that well for him. Even if it seems small, even if it seems insignificant God has a role for you to play amen would you bow your heads with me this morning hallelujah every eye closed kids I need your help right now okay can you all help close your eyes and bow your heads and be still right now and that would help me out greatly thank you kids as we sit in this room this morning we're in a place where we've talked about the baby Jesus. We talked about Joseph and Mary and the angels. But right now I want you to stop and look at your own life. And I want to ask you, what part have you allowed God to play in your heart? Because you know what? There might not be any small parts in our lives, but God wants the biggest part in your life. He wants to be the star of your life. He wants to be the star of your heart. He wants to shine brighter than anything else, and he wants to shine through you. You can't even begin to fulfill God's purpose for your life if you don't come to a place of surrendering your heart to Jesus. This whole thing of Jesus coming to the earth, you know, with your eyes closed and heads bowed, I want to just mention this one story I heard. This lady who heard, saw a sign outside of a church that said Jesus is the reason for the season. And she proclaimed this comment. How come the church has to take everything and turn it into something religious? People don't even realize that Christmas wouldn't exist if it wasn't for Jesus. It didn't start about Santa Claus and lights and decorations and presents and gift giving. It began with a baby in a stable. But that baby came to save you. It was part of God's detailed plan for your life. That baby came and was born to grow up resisting every temptation on this earth so he could become the sinless sacrifice and die for your sins and mine. The Bible says we've all sinned and we all fall short of God's glory and that the wages of our sin is death which is eternal separation from God yes I'm going to say it death and eternal separation means going to hell and not to heaven when you die unless you know Jesus Christ as your savior but you see God loved you so much that he gave his one and only son that whoever would believe in him would not perish but have an everlasting life God gave his one and only. He demonstrated his love towards you and me that when we were still in a place of sin, when we're still sinners, that he sent Jesus to die for us, even knowing that many would reject him. But he stands today at the door of your heart and he knocks and he says, will you open up the door? Will you open up your heart to me and let me into your life? Will you let me come in? Can I come in and be your friend? Will you surrender your will to my will? Will you take the role in your life, the part that I have for you to play? We think we have the best role that we can play. We think that we know what things we should do, but God has a greater plan for each of us. And if you're here this morning and you have not surrendered your life to the plan of Jesus Christ, he's here in this room today. Maybe you're here in this room and maybe you surrendered at one point, but you've you, you didn't think it was big enough, so you picked up your life and took it back again to do your own thing. And God is sitting here knocking at your heart today saying, where have you been? 
I thought we were friends. I thought we were going to, to fellowship throughout your life together. I have plans for you. Maybe you've gotten off course. God wants to bring you back on course this morning. He's here in this room today. And he's calling out, will you surrender to me one more time? 